say something which doesn't make any sense in English, because if I would do this presentation in German, I'm funny, <laughs> and if I do it in English, I'm funny. <laughs> so, um, this is basically um, a chapter which will come up next month in a book. Um, I'm not sure how you say that, or the book is written up a lot of people, the chapter is another topic. Um, and uh, Emerald told me that I'm, I'm happy to show you something about it. It's about sustainable development. Well, the other hand, if you compare the other man, for example, with company, it's not very really good. I mean, the other man is not a company. It's a nation on its own, it's an island, there are a lot of things which are not the same, right? However, the other man is facing a lot of difficult things, let's say. At the moment, oh, that's another thing. I'm not a graphic designer, so sorry for the, uh, the, for the colors. <laughs> I'm not the color blind, I'm just bad at that, you know? So, um, if you look at the other man, it's quite small compared to Europe, right? And this small nation has basically the same amount, if you look just on British companies, right? Um, same amount of people or less people living on the island than people working, for example, for uh, Tesco or similar to GlaxoSmith Klein, right? So the question is why should the island face other difficulties than basically a company? We ask every company to be sustainable, whatever that means. Um, now the island needs to be sustainable as well. And there are some problems you are facing, or we're all facing, as well as companies do. Um, at the Isle of Man, Brexit is still a big problem. Well, now you would say the Isle of Man has not been part of the EU. Yes, but you have more connection to um, that area. And as you could say, in uh, the UK, we'll have problems for the next 30 years. So this is the big trading part for the Isle of Man. Probably the other man will suffer for that from that point of view as well, or at least has to face this problem. Uh, another problem you are facing, as everybody else, COVID, right? The other one, which is basically global warming, the climate crisis, um, and of course, even it looks like Ukraine is far away, but. You have the same problem as the rest of Europe. Gas prices, inflation, mm. fear. So uh, maybe you're not as in fear as <laughs> the central of Europe where you think, oh, maybe Russia is coming. Uh, Russia is coming, but there's also fear. Um, not so. so all these might lead to decline of wealth. Decline of wealth means that you might produce your property and this leads to fear again. If you have fear, you probably behave now even differently, even to yesterday, even if you didn't lose anything yet, right? Now, the question is, how do you face these troubles and this fear? By looking forward, as you said, vision, right? Looking forward, what can we do? And there are some strategies companies do. They look at um, sustainable development. The UN, um, United Nations, developed the sustainable development goals. These are basically more for companies and states than um, for normal people, right? There are 17 um, sustainable development goals. SDGs. And one of them are sound very good, isn't it? No, uh, no harm, no poverty, zero hunger, good health, well being, whatever that means, gender equality, um, sustainable cities and communities, peace, justice, and strong institutions. That's right. Every goal, even every goal, has different um, parts below that where you have uh, aims to get, right? to make what, what you said before, to make it positive, measurable, you know, 
Goals need to be smart, and one thing is that measurable, right? Achievable. Terminate. Um, and when I did this chapter, I was thinking, yeah, that's easy to do. I just look up statistics and look where the Isle of Man is actually based, you know, and compare it with other parts, and then I can say something. Yeah. <laughs> that was my idea. The problem is, um, the only statistic where you can believe them, where it's easy to find data for all these 17 goals, is at the World Bank group. The World Bank sounds like bank, it's not bank, it's just the bank, you know? but they do statistics similar to Eurostat, you may know, and unfortunately there are not a lot of data to have a quantitative outcome, to say it quite right away, like this is the status quo and you can compare it. So my research became more qualitative with quantitative data I found. <laughs> so it's, it's not clear, it's not hard facts, it's more soft facts. Okay? Um, and this is something which I'm, I'm actually sad about because if you would have clear data for all these parts, which is possible, um, you may have a much better overview about how sustainable is the island compared to others. Now, if you look at that, the first thing on that side, you have to think of what means sustainability. I mean, it's a word we, we find everywhere, isn't it? Like, um, but the question is, what does it basically mean? And in, in theory, sustainability means the connection of economic, ecologic, and um, social uh, aims. So, you're not sustainable, you don't think about culture, about people, about um, how they feel like. Uh, but you, you think on making a lot of money and preserving the, the nature, right? That's not sustainable. You have to have all the three parts. Now, as you have probably heard about the concept of magical triangle, right? The magical triangle says there are three um, corners and you never be able to achieve all of these corners, all of these aims, 100%. It's not possible. So you have to decide which part is more important to look at or how to balance that, right? And on the other side, you see in Europe, a uh, political part of Europe, because here are the Canary Islands as well, uh, Madeira and the source, you say so? I'm not sure. I told them to do it anyway. <laughs> um, so you see the map of Europe and you see the Isle of Man. It's totally um, uh, green. In this case, because the only nation which has, well, that has this label of uh, being uh, vice free reserve of the uh, UNESCO. And you see here as well other biofuel reserves, official biofuel reserves in all other countries. And you notice that there is no complete nation or even state, whatever you might think of, which has this name but regions. Right? Um, France, there's, for example, a big region in, in North Germany. This is where I'm from, uh, <laughs> originally. Um, we have However, they are more used for developing regional development. Now, the Isle of Man has its region as well. You're not looking at regional development, you look at the mass development, right? The development of the Isle of Man. The question is, um, what does it actually mean? Now, I showed you, showed you the sustainable development goals from the UN. And you all know that UNESCO is also part of the UN. So where's the difference then between the vice minister and the, the sustainable development goals? The sustainable development goals comes from the UNO, the, the United Nations organization, the model of the organization let's say. And the UNESCO is the United Nations Organization for uh, Education, Science and um, Cultural Development, I guess. Um, so UNESCO is the daughter 
organization to set it up in English as well. And UNESCO thought, well, to reach the sustainable goal, goals of the UN, we create a label for areas which are biosphere reserves. And this label is basically like, like the label um, uh, what you see on other products uh, where it says it's sustainable development or, or a, a, a child work free or, or however you say that in English. Um, it's basically a label. So what does it do? Does it give us money? No, but it still doesn't give you money. Not at all. I mean, they don't give money. For other programs, why should they give you money to develop? So, this label, the idea of UNESCO is basically to create um, sites for sustainable support sites. So, the idea of this biosphere reserve is not based on, on, on money or a certain level you achieve, but to create um, a, a science hub to achieve sustainability. How do you achieve it? Well, um, first you have to face all the problems you might have. Right? One is the problems or all the achievements you have in uh, economic parts. I'm professor, I have the professorship for economic, so that's the easiest part for me. And um, I used this uh, module from Weatherhat, so I steal it. As I cited it, it's not stolen, I just cited it, you know. <laughs> That's the good society. And well, I um, thought about how to develop small areas. Um, what are the problems of small areas, in this case, small states? At that time, we more at, at Luxembourg, not Luxembourg, at uh, Liechtenstein, Monaco, um, Andorra, which are, by the way, much smaller than we are now. Um, and looked at it and thought, why, what is the problem specific for them than for uh, big states like the US? That doesn't come from the US, I mean, because the US and Russia are much bigger. So, what are the problems? Um, you, if you go down, you see small areas, or small states, small nations have a problem with isolation. And then we come back to Brexit. Isolation means geographically, politically, or culturally. If you're isolated, you have more problem. You probably have higher costs and less uh, profits. Why costs? Well, you need thinking. Where do you get the products from? Not all products you buy are coming from, are produced at the other way. But how do they get to the other way? I mean, the transport costs, just the transport costs, are much higher to get to the other way than from a factory getting by, by uh, um, there was the word. <laughs> by a car uh, to, to, to just a shop in a bar. Mm, as well as if you're isolated, for example, politically, you are much vulnerable. A word which I can't pronounce, but you understand me. <laughs> um, if you compare that, oh, politically, you're not as isolated as other areas, like Gibraltar has been. I don't know if you know about Gibraltar. The, uh, Gibraltar is, they feel like an island, but they're not. They are connected to Spain and they have the ongoing conflict if they're Spanish or British, you know. And uh, they have been, several years, they have been um, separated by a fence. And this fence has been, the border has been totally closed, so uh, by the, the former regime from Franco from Spain. So they have a problem where to get products from because the land uh, connection wasn't there, they didn't have an airport at that time. So, you see, it's difficult for them to trade. And then if you think to make up a company, right, with your own money, with your own risk, would you go then to an area where politically uncertain and in that time they thought, uh, in all things, it, it, at any moment, there might come the Spanish tank and destroy my company. So why should they create it now? Right? You would go to another place. That's why uh, isolation leads to bad work. <laughs> what else? Well, to achieve some um, wealth, normally, so 
small areas or, or, or small nations are focusing on export. Why? Because the possible uh, um, um, buyers are too less in my area, right? So where are more buyers? Outside of my, my country. So I go and sell it in belts, like the Germans do as well. <coughs> slightly bigger than I don't um, But once the, the, uh, the ambassador, ambassador of Germany in, in Copenhagen said, we sell in English, but we buy in German. Like everybody else, more or less, right? So there are more small areas need to be more open for export and import, which leads to a problem because what can you produce? I mean, regarding the, depending on the resources you have, mainly it's agriculture, like Andorra used to be, um, like the Fairy Islands. Without fish, they would be that rich. So most of them are more exporting agriculture or less than manufacturing, right? And this, in the case of Ireland, it's much more um, services, like I mean. Yeah, the question is, they're, they're the moral part, you know, the social part is, is, is e-gaming or, or banking system, banks looks like they pay people. Since, since the financial crisis in 2008, if they haven't been before, but bank is another word for help, isn't it? Or that probably in, <laughs> in all over the place. All right, okay, great. Um, all these might lead to all these problems might lead to less investment. Less investment means less development, less growth. So how do you face it? Well, the Iron Man, surprisingly, the Iron Man, if you look at the GDP per capita from 2006 onwards, they lead to very high GDP per capita. Almost double of the UK, and much more than double than um, the EU. The EU without the UK, okay? <laughs> That's important. Um, and between that is the OECD. Now, you don't know it, however, it's surprising, isn't it? How did you get that? Well, probably all of these problems, you're not as faced as much, or you, you, you already challenged those problems by developing a quite diverse um, economy by not being that isolated. And on the other side, you see uh, data for uh, unemployment, registered unemployment, which is for me quite funny because um, I used to work in Hamburg at the Federal um, Office for Unemployment and these numbers, of total numbers of unemployment, right? I mean, uh, if you look, the highest how it was like 2,300 people on the whole island which are just unemployed. I, I can't imagine that. I mean, in Hamburg, we, they, they have much more, <laughs> much more. This is a very low percentage, even on the, the highest grade, even on the start of the pandemic. I mean, it's a very low percentage. And it's impressive. And impressive. Why? Is it just because you don't have a job you leave the island? I don't think so. I mean, that might be an idea, isn't it? But I don't think so. Um, and it's not that point. Um, if you... So the economic part is already covered, kind of thing. The social part, where I look at, is basically uh, the question of what's the identity feeling. In my, my research, I had the question uh, what, to which um, nation or ethnic group do you feel belong to? And I didn't gave the possibility to, to choose, uh, to, to, to combine one of these. And you see, most of the people over the years said they were. So the social society is quite strong connected. Um, combined with the economic part, I think you said that, yeah, right? The, the, the idea that you, the uh, man then pulls you back, is it sentence, right? The, the feel strong of identity leads to a strong community which works together. And I noticed that as well because um, I asked as well what's the symbol of 
by the brand. And a lot of people choose the option other, saying the buy school is open. And there you go, that basically by saying that, you, you, you created a society which is, which is already involved in this sustainable ideas. What can I do? You might have seen the, the program of uh, Culture Venom. Um, I think it was Men and Footsteps. I know that that was something like that. Show what you have done for sustainable development. A lot of people think on ecological uh, uh, development. However, one of these parts, right? Um, so, even this sustainable development is big, is, is already done in the society. The, the, the idea of being necessary to come together and do something for all of us in a sustainable way seems to be achieved or not achieved or not in the right way. Of this, right? Um, as well as the ecological part, if you look at all the sites which are natural reserves, like already on the Isle of Man, are quite a lot. If you compare that with big states, the percentage is much, much higher than um, the biggest state, obviously. And the funny thing is, then it comes to the smallness of the Isle. Everybody of you know these parts of these areas. You might have been there. And as you think, this is like part of the Isle, you protect it. So basically, I would say, without having correct hard fact data, this label works because it brings all people together to work on these problems you have. And it seems that the other plan is on the right way to be sustainable. Now, my question would be, is it that good that other small states like Monaco and Andorra, like San Marino, like Gibraltar societies should choose this label for their whole country as well. This is something we have to fight to answer with uh, hard facts. These are very soft facts, isn't it? And uh, that's basically it.